Hey, Laud. Wow. What are you doing? Are you, what'd you do with Miss Laurie? Is she around? Oh, hey, Laurie, how you doing? I'm good. Oh, you good. know what? What? I had an epiphany. An epiphany? What's an epiphany? I realized something. Oh, a realization or an uncovering of something. Mm -hmm. what, what was that, Miss Laurie? These. Okay. Happy New Year's, everyone. But these. Okay, hold your ears. Never give your teenage children, okay, any children, never give children these. Mm -hmm. Too much for the ears, huh? That was my epiphany. Mm. I'm here in my kitchen and I had an epiphany too, and that's that I am out of food. We had wonderful food for Christmas and it's all gone and I'm going to have to go to the grocery store. It's time. Well, hello, everyone. <laughs> I'm Reverend Meredith Brown, our lead pastor of Douglas Avenue United Methodist Church. And this is Ms. Laurie, our director of Children and Youth Ministries and Laud the Lamb. And welcome to Celebrate Wonder. We're so glad that you are joining with us. Merry Christmas and Happy New Year. We are celebrating Epiphany today, which is when we remember the Magi or the wise men who came to see Jesus after he was born. And they have their own special celebration on January 6th, which is today, Epiphany. So we probably should head to our wonder tables and uh, get to doing some of that. What do you think, Miss Laurie? Law degrees. Are you going to bring that noisemaker? <laughs> well, let's head over. I'll see you at the wonder table. Okay, we're back. And we are at our wonder table. Hello. So we have to light the candle first. Yep, lighting the candle, not the lamb. Okay, all right. All right, I'm gonna go around this side this time. Lord. See if I can see if I can do this with my left hand. It's not looking real promising. Oh, look at that. What could go wrong? There we go. I got mine first shot, Miss Laurie. Well, I was trying to not knock things over and start the house on fire, so. Okay, so I was wondering, because I'm at the wonder table, Pastor Meredith, who makes you feel included? Our new word, include. Who makes you feel included? Well, I can say that you, Miss Laurie, and Laud the Lamb always make me feel included. You say hello, you ask me how I'm doing, you invite me to do whatever it is you're doing and into conversation and to play and to work and to pray. I always feel included with you, Miss Laurie. Thank you. What about you? Who helps you feel included? Uh, well, you make me feel included by inviting me to do this every week. That's really wonderful. My kids make me feel included all of the time, right? Mm -hmm. Laud makes me feel included, sometimes donkey, you know. Cool. The cast of characters. Have you ever felt excluded before? Oh, uh, yeah, sometimes. Probably maybe back in junior high, yeah. high school. Of course, sometimes, I think sometimes I felt like I wasn't included, but really I was, but it's just kind of a strange time. Yeah. It's hard when you feel excluded, when it's like, well, nobody's going to talk with me, or why don't I get invited to play the game or whatever's going on? It, that can feel really hard, but lucky for us, our wonder word, faith word is include for the next part. So we're going to, um, we're going to get to talk more about that, which is wonderful. You know, our Bible story today is really a wonderful story about being included. It is a story from the Bible of the wise men or the magi coming to see Jesus after he had been born. 
And it's wonderful that these people are included in the Bible story. We hope that you will read together as a family or whoever you're doing this with, Matthew chapter 2, verses 1 through 12. That's where the story is found. Mm -hmm. But these interesting people from very far away from where Jesus lives, we think that all the way, way far in the east, all the way to Persia, they see a star rise and they're like, we know something interesting has happened because we look for interesting things to happen when stars rise. And they came and and they found Jesus and his mother, Mary, in the house that they were in, in Bethlehem. And when they show up, they bring gifts. And this is where we get our tradition of giving gifts at Christmas time. And they, but they bring some interesting things, don't they, Miss Laurie, for their gifts to give to Jesus? Yes, they do. They bring gold. We know what gold is, like money, like fancy gold. I have on a gold necklace right here. But it also says they bring frankincense and myrrh. That's kind of weird. What are those things, Miss Laurie? No, no, no. Frankincense, not Frankenstein. Yeah. Sorry, Law got a little scared for a minute. Nope. I think not not did too. The dogs ran out barking. Frankincense, not, Frank not Frankenstein. Correct, frankincense. And I actually have some frankincense right here to show everybody in my treasure chest. It says that, in the story. That is so cool. It says in the story that they opened up their treasure chest and they gave these very special gifts of gold and frankincense and myrrh. Myrrh is kind of like an oil and a perfume, but frankincense is actually a, a, a resin that comes off of trees. And when you burn it, it smells really good, like incense, frankincense, but it's kind of colorful and it looks like this and it's very special and it would have been very expensive and it would have been something that the, the magi, the wise men used in their uh, religious practice and um, just was something very special. So that's what they gave to Jesus. They brought those special gifts with them. Well, I have, this has me wondering why is it that you think the Magi traveled so far to come see Jesus? What do you think, Laurie? Well, I, I think it's because they knew that he was somebody very special. I think they knew that. I think they knew that he, he was the new king, even a little baby, yes. because they were very wise. And, you know, they brought these interesting gifts. I wonder why they brought gold and frankincense and myrrh. I think it's because those were things that were very valuable to them. And so they gave their very best things mm -hmm. to Jesus. That's how I, th I think we know that they knew because of the things that they were bringing. You wouldn't just, I mean, I don't just bring those to like a baby shower. Mm -hmm. You know, right. So I think you bring things like gold and expensive spices to somebody really important. I think so. Should we roll our wonder cubes? So we hope Ooh, that yeah. you have a wonder cube at home to remember when you read your story and watch the story that you use your wonder cube. Okay. I'm going to roll mine. I have to roll it over here. Okay. I got, I wonder, where did you see God in the Bible story? Well, I see God in the Bible story because God got the uh, the Magi, the wise men's attention with a star, something that they were looking for and something they understood. I think God speaks to us. Um, in ways that you can. I'm, what about you? I think the wise men might be at my door. <laughs> hmm. You want to roll your wonder cube, Miss Laurie? I, <laughs> yes, I, I would like to roll my wonder cube. And you know what's funny? I think the wise men were at my door and left me a present. <laughs> I hope so. Who knew? Okay, I got, oh, uh, I wonder if you could be any character in the Bible story. What character would you be? You know, in the Bible story, that, oh, hmm. well, that's an interesting angle. All right, I'm going to give you Laud's answer. If he could be anybody in that Bible story, he would want to be the camel. We didn't talk about a camel, but he's right. That's how they would have gotten there. They didn't just walk. 
So they would have ridden camels. And that would have been really interesting because you would have been carrying these really wise men and would have gotten to kind of go along and see the see the whole the whole story. Mary and Joseph and Jesus and the animals and mm -hmm. Not that's what I would like to do. That's who he'd like to be. Very nice. Well, shall uh, we're going to get to watch our Bible video next, so make sure you get really close. But shall we have a prayer together? Yes. You want to repeat after? Yes. You want to repeat after? Pray with me? Oh, we're praying okay. with you. Go, Miss Laurie, go. All right. Dear God. Dear God. Help me to show your love. Help me to show your love. And to include everyone. And to include everyone. Amen. Amen. All right, let's watch our Bible story. You ready? I'm ready. Great. Greetings, friends. I'm Carly. Today's story is about the Magi that went to see Jesus and honor him. Another name for the Magi is the wise men. The Magi followed the East Star and found Jesus. But the Magi didn't just come to see Jesus. They also brought him gifts. They brought him gold, frankincense, and myrrh. These certainly are not normal gifts for a baby. They're not toys or new blankets. The Magi knew that Jesus was special, and they wanted to honor him with the best gifts they could think of. The Magi were not people you'd expect to come visit a baby, but God wanted to include them in the story. God wants to include all of us in God's story. To include means to welcome all of God's children in God's love. God sets the example for us by sharing the news of Jesus' birth with people from all different places, like the shepherds and the Magi. Wait, I just realized something. You and I are also part of the story because we're told about the amazing story of Jesus' birth. Of course, we don't need to bring gold, frankincense, and myrrh. I don't even know what all of those things are. But we can do things that honor Jesus, and we can share God's story. Like the Magi, we all come from different places and we also have unique gifts to offer. Regardless of who we are, we are all included in God's story. I am so happy to be included, aren't you? Now it's your turn to wonder. Okay, everybody, it's time to get ready to look at our craft project, our activity together for this week. And you're gonna need your chalk that was in your Celebrate Wonder Kit. If you don't have a Celebrate Wonder Kit, that's okay. Find some chalk at your house, but make sure you ask permission before you do this or do this together as a family. Now, one of the traditional things that's often done uh, on Epiphany, the celebration that we have of the Magi of the Three Kings is the tradition of chalking the door. And that means that you take the chalk and as a blessing for the new year, you can place a horizontal line above your door or on the sides of your door. And Miss Laurie's going to show us doing this on one of her doors. There she goes right there. She did a great job. And, you know, some of us are shorter. So maybe we could do little horizontal lines on the sides if that works for you. Now, it also says in your kit that sometimes people would use the letters that were traditionally associated with the wise men's uh, names. Now it's not in the Bible, but the wise men were traditionally known as Caspar, Melchior, and Balthazar. So if you wanted to do the very traditional marking, this is a new year, 2021, you might write the number 20 and then the letters C, M, B, followed by the number 21. So like 20, Caspar, Melchior, Balthazar, 21 as a traditional marking. Oh, Miss Laurie's doing a great job. So enjoy that, doing that together. And then we have a special blessing prayer that you can say as well when you do this. So uh, Miss Laurie, why don't you say after me and we'll say the blessing like this. Bless this home. Bless, Bless this, this home. And all who come here to live together. And all who come here to live together. Wonderful. Enjoy chalking your doors to everybody. Thanks. Okay, adults, it's time for your spiritual practice. 
And we're talking about inclusion this week. That is our new faith word. And you need to be considering how it is that you include in your life. You know, our kids learn how to include by watching us. So our spiritual practice this week is to try to include someone new. Now, that may be a little bit difficult with a pandemic and staying close to home, but take a couple of minutes to think about who might be kind of new in your life or maybe somebody that you haven't seen or talked to in a long time, and how could you include them? I was thinking about this. I have a new person that has joined one of my clergy groups, and so I am going to reach out to her to have uh, online coffee so that I can include her and get to know her better. What about you, Miss Laurie? You know, I have some friends that I've had from other places that I would really like to get back into contact with. So I think I might do that. That sounds like a great idea. So be thinking about that and praying about that, adults. How could I include some new people in my life? Maybe in my church, I could invite them to be a part. Or maybe I could uh, include myself into a small group. I've been meaning to do that. Maybe it's time to include a new thing as we've come into the new year. Maybe a small group or a Bible study at church or getting together um, online in a safe way with someone you haven't seen in a while. Let's do it this week, adults. Can we do it? Hi, everybody. Thank you so much for joining us on another week of Celebrate Wonder. Some ending thoughts. Your new celebration chart that we had gotten has all of the fun Christmassy things on it. Don't forget to do that as a family, our celebration chart. Some of my boxes have lots of check marks, others not as many. But don't forget, don't forget to include others as much as you can. Yes, the word include. Which is a wonderful way to remember our uh, prayer that you can do together as a household or you can do throughout the week. And it's a, a simple prayer and we get to use our hands. So I want you to put your hand up like this. It kind of looks like a star, doesn't it? It's kind of shaped out like a star shape. It's got five things. And what you do is uh, you touch each finger and you say this prayer. You say, I will include and put somebody's name or a group of people in God's love. So like, I will include Laud in God's love. And I will include all of the children watching today in God's love. What about you, Lori? I will include donkey in all of God's love. And I will also include all of the moms and dads and grandparents of all of those kids that you included in God's love. I'm going to include them too. Well, can I do the last one? Mm -hmm. I'm going to include people I haven't even met yet in God's love. So That's we, a good idea. So we encourage you to use your hand and say that prayer every day this week. I will include in God's love. I think this is my favorite prayer. I really like it too. So don't forget to uh, do all of your Celebrate Wonder things. And uh, remember to stick around for a few minutes following uh, this time because we'll have our song to sing along with and our wonderful video. Thanks so much, everybody. We'll see you next time. There's nothing common about your grace. such beauty from the dirt It doesn't matter the time or place You're right here with us even when we hurt Cause you weep us together like the season Good news
This tree grows from the smallest seed The greatest strength up from the deepest roots And there's a story in every Every time